Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode 60 and today we're going to be talking about wintering, the solstice, the dreams and Mercury retrograde. So if they sound like interesting things to you, then grab a cup of tea, put the incense on, get comfy and we'll get started. Hi everyone, welcome back, happy solstice. I'm so sorry I wasn't here last week. I got completely confused. I got caught up in Yule and Christmas preparations. I then went to my mum and dad's to stay overnight and I thought I was going Wednesday into Thursday, but it was actually Thursday into Friday. So I completely missed the witching week. I am so sorry. I will not do that again. And um, yeah, I just want to say happy solstice to you all. It is very, very dark and gloomy here. I've got some natural light coming in, which is brilliant, but my kitchen is actually really, really super dark. So let's start with tea and incense. Today I am burning rosemary incense and I'm just drinking the good old fashioned lime squash, which is just lime juice in water. Um, I'm actually quite warm and um, for all of you who have been asking me if I'm warm I am my husband started a new job I'm not sure he's going to stick with it but it is going to get us through winter so we have been warm so yes I'm absolutely fine thank you for asking um also, I just want to say sorry for my absence on Instagram. I did have posts planned for every day of December. However, just COVID just kicked my butt so much that I just didn't manage to get on and actually even just post them. And when I'm feeling really, really unwell, I tend to feel a bit overwhelmed. I get a bit anxious. And so I couldn't bring myself to actually come on to the programme and put those posts up. So I'm really, really sorry about that, but it just absolutely floored me. So 2024 is a fresh start, isn't it? January, new start, new calendar year. So I will be back in the swing of things, hopefully, and let's just hope that I don't catch too many more bugs. Um, but I will do my very, very best to be a bit more present. So happy solstice to you. Did you get up this morning to see sunrise? We have got eight hours and 49 minutes less light than we did have at the summer solstice. Isn't that crazy? That's a whole day's worth of light, eight hours, 49 minutes. We actually, well, I don't know if this is official. I looked at the weather app and it seems that we have an extra minute tomorrow. However, I don't know if that is genuine extra light or that is something that's happening due to like refraction. It was really, really hard this year to find out information on when the days would start to get a little bit longer. Usually you can find this information online. For whatever reason, I couldn't find it this year. As you know, as we've discussed on this channel before, solstice marks a point of standstill. So there are usually two or three days where the days don't increase in length. And then at some point we'll get an extra 15, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and then it will pick up pace. I haven't managed to find that information at all, but I have looked at the weather app and it does seem that tomorrow on the 23rd, we'll have an extra minute. So whether that's official or not, we'll just celebrate that anyway. So yeah, the days will now be getting longer. We do have the deepest, darkest part of the year to go though, um, the coldest part. So yeah, January and February and sometimes March can be pretty brutal, can't they? So we are looking forward to the light. We're looking forward to warmer days, longer days, but we actually have to do the harshest part of the year first. So it's a bit of a funny time, isn't it? I've been thinking about the concept of wintering. This is a term that was coined, I believe, by a lady called Catherine May in her book, Wintering, the Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. And the concept of wintering is that when you're met with hard times, so that could be a bereavement, it could be loss of a job, it could be illness, anything like that, that we should slow down the pace of our own lives um, ignore what everyone else is doing and how fast they're going, but we should slow everything down and we should do things at our own pace. And we should really do this anyway, but we really should be wintering over winter. And I love this time of year. It's great that we have a festival of light, as do many cultures and religions. 
However, this is supposed to be a time where we rest, we recuperate, we regenerate, and actually we go inwards and we spend a little bit of time sort of germinating and cultivating and nurturing some of our plants that we made earlier on in the year. If you think about planting seeds, over winter they will be in darkness you won't see anything from them we water them and they will sit in a pot of soil and then when we get to the spring they will start to bloom so there's that incubation period and that is what the winter is all about we don't have as much vitamin d at this point in the year we don't have as much energy as much drive it really is a time for resting so i really really think we should really be wintering over winter and I've certainly learned that lesson this year catching Covid at the end of November when I wasn't prepared for the season coming up, wasn't pre prepared for December and then I've been thrown into the thick of it when I've finally been well enough to crack on with um, preparations. So next year I'm definitely going to start to get organised much much earlier than even normally I would be. I was late this year, normally I'd have most things done by the beginning of November. However, I think I'm really, really gonna look to the summer when I've got the most amount of energy to start planning and preparing for my Christmas and my winter period so that when the time comes, there isn't this sort of like massive rush. So that's been a big lesson for me this year. Um, I'm also really, really looking forward to Christmas and New Year this year because of the situation this year. This has probably been my worst year in many, many, many years as an adult. It has been a really, really tough year. And I know that's been the same for many people, but it has given me a really a different outlook on life. I'm gonna really, really enjoy Christmas, really enjoy celebrations, even though that's, that's difficult, making me tired, but yeah, I'm really gonna embrace it this year. So I was sent a book um, to read over winter. So that's something I'm gonna try and do this Christmas period is just take time out quietly. I'm, I'm, I'm quite quiet and sit quite quietly anyway when I'm sort of like working on my various little projects, but I'm gonna try and take more time out to do quiet things to relax for me. And one of those is reading. I'm really trying to improve my reading ability, which I really struggle with. So reading is my thing this winter. And I've been sent this book. And it's weird now because when you get a book from publishers, um, a lot of them, this is witchy books, they tend to send them now with things like candles, coloured tissue paper and um, cards, hero cards and some herbs, which is really, really lovely and really exciting when you get the book. But yeah, I have been sent The Witch's Daughter by Imogen Edward Jones and it is about... It's a spellbinding tale of love, lust, magic and betrayal in Imperial Russia. And apparently this is based on a true story and it's apparently a historical novel, but I haven't been able to work out which one it is. But anyway, I'm going to read this. I'm going to let you know how I get on. I'm currently reading The Children of Green No, which I picked up when I went to visit Lucy in Boston's house. I told you about that in the last episode of The Witching Week. It's a children's book, but it's a magical children's book. And I have to say, I'm really, really enjoying it. So although it's a children's book, I am going to do a review on it. And I'm going to review this one as well, as this is a sort of non-fiction. It's not a reference book, but I will be doing some book posts in 2024. Now, I know in my last few videos, I've been saying, I've got a video on this, I've got a video on that. I have prepared lots of videos I filmed some of them already. I just haven't edited them or uploaded them. And that was because COVID, that was purely what stopped me. My husband's also started working from home. So it's much more difficult to record when he's here because sometimes he's in meetings and you can hear him. But it was COVID that really sort of like put a spanner in the work. So we had videos that were publishing and I was like ahead of myself. So I was totally organized. But yes, the videos that I have been promising, there's one on Yule, um, there's a perimenopause one, there's some other witchcraft related ones. 
Um, I've tried to tie them all into witchcraft one way or another, but yes, they are. I promise they're in the pipeline. It's just that um, COVID absolutely kicked my bottom. So at the moment, talking of kicking my butt, um, we are in Mercury retrograde and it is retrograding hard. Now, I didn't realise that we're in Mercury, Mercury retrograde. I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute and my experience. But for those of you who are new, um, we've probably doubled in subscribers since we last spoke about this subject. But um, I was always in two minds about Mercury retrograde. I'm not the sort of person who will blame everything and anything that happens on external matters. However, I'm also a fan of the tenet as above, so below. Um, you know, that what happens in the microcosm has an effect on the macrocosm and what happens in the skies has an impact on us down here. And so, yeah, we were in Mercury retrograde until January the 1st, I think. It's a very, very neat year next year because it starts on January, Monday is January 1st, I think. Um, but I lost all my work. I had some other things happen as well, but the most typical sort of Mercury retrograde issue is technology. And I lost all my work. And then I realized that we were in Mercury retrograde. So again, it's very interesting because I was kind of keeping an eye on Mercury retrograde after the last conversation we had about this. Um, and it does seem that things happen whenever we enter it. So I lost, basically it's an online design tool. I've designed my grimoire. I digitized my grimoire from the age of 18. I decided I was gonna make it into a beautiful printout version going to make that available to people. I've been working on some courses and I had all like my watermark, my logo, all of those kinds of things. I've been working on it for about four years now. And so I had about four years worth of stuff on there and it all disappeared. And it, Canva keeps trying to tell me it's me. It's not me. I haven't actually deleted it. Whenever I went into a document to edit it, more documents would disappear. I have managed to get most of it back, about 80 to 85% due to my hard work. But um, yeah, I've lost the majority of it. So very, very typical Mercury retrograde issue. So yeah, so very, very interesting. What do you think about Mer Mercury retrograde? Is it responsible for these issues or not? Tell me what you think. I have been having some very, very weird dreams. I don't know again if that is something to do with Mercury retrograde or that's just because life's busy and as I've obviously had some stuff to process. But um, yeah, it got me thinking about dreams. So dreams are the language of our subconscious. And according to the American Hypnosis Association, about 88% of our mind's power is spent on subconscious working. So that would be things like dreams. And at best, about 12% of our mind's power is spent on conscious logical processes so that's absolutely incredible so dreams are the language of our wisdom of our intelligence and so it's really helpful if we can learn how to decode them i am absolutely rubbish at learning to decode them it's not my forte i can recognize when you know oh yeah i dreamt that because of that i i can work that out but the really really bizarre ones i just i don't have a clue you know I'm, i don't know about the archetypes i don't know about what represents what i do have one dream that happens a lot and I am aware that it's because of my health issue and that is about my teeth falling out and usually it involves like one starting to crumble and then they all come out and um, yeah it's always quite disturbing and I never enjoy that dream. I haven't had it for a while, I'm probably going to ha have it now I've mentioned it. What about you? Do you have very, very vivid dreams? Are you good at remembering them? Have you written them down in the morning? Has that helped in trying to retrieve them? Are you good at working out what's what? Do you have any really wild dreams? What's the wildest dream that you've ever had? I dream a lot about places that feel really familiar to me that I do wonder if sometimes I'm going to suddenly visit one day and go oh that's the place from my dream sometimes they're so familiar that I can't work out if I've just dreamt about them before there seems to be this haziness around this um 
and I wake up and I can't remember if I've dreamt about this place before or if that's just a feeling that I have from the dream. It's very, very weird. I sometimes have dreams, not very often, probably about two or three times in my lifetime, but sometimes I have dreams that where I will wake myself up laughing. And I think I've told you before, but I had one dream in particular about a hot, steaming ham that was in my handbag. And in this dream, this was like, hilariously funny to the point where I woke myself and my husband up laughing and for several months afterwards whenever I thought back to that dream it, it would evoke that same response so it, it would make me laugh even though it wasn't funny and even though it takes quite a lot to make me laugh I've got a very bizarre sense of humour which I do share with my cousin Liam who's watching but it takes a lot to really really make me giggle so it's weird how that the, the thought of that dream if I would think back to that it would make me easily come to laughter again. That has now faded. So brain, I could really do with another one of those dreams because it was a great source of sort of joy and comfort. You know, if I wanted to, I could just recall this dream and then I would get that joyful feeling. Um, so yeah, they tend to be my dreams, but yeah, dreams about familiar places that I've never been to in my sort of waking life. Um, yeah, I dream about that a lot. Um, and yeah, I don't know why. So if you can shed any light on that, then please let me know. But yeah, I would love to know about your dreams, your experience of dreams, and what the kind of dreams you have, and are you good at decoding them? There are obviously experts out there um, who do this, and I know that some of you, I know one person on here anyway that watches is an expert at dreams, but yeah, I'd like to know, I'd like to know what your experiences are surrounding dreams. So I wanted to read something in the spirit of uh, the season, and it's called Hail to Sunna by Heidi Shuchuk, and this is a 21st century poem, and Sunna is the Norse and Germanic sun goddess and would say all means be in good health. So if, if you're not aware, um, old sort of Norse peoples and um, perhaps some Germanic peoples as well, they had the sun and the moon the opposite way round to the way that we personify them now. So we look at the sun as being a masculine sort of entity or force or energy and the moon as being feminine. Well, it was actually the other way round. So here we go, hail to summer. Sun is burning arrows. Pierce the gloom of midwinter. Her glory resounds triumphant across the dreaming land, and the first buds of spring will awake to her call. Hail to her, who is queen of heaven, burning wheel of creation, creatrix, destroyer, queen. Her face of white hot gold shines upon me, and I rejoice in her glory. The hawk circles high, delighting in the cloudless sky, while below the snow glitters like stars. The little songbirds sing proudly from the highest tree. Rejoice, rejoice, Sunna has returned. Her face of bright favour smiles upon us all. Hail to you, Sunna, Queen of Heaven, Wassail. It's really beautiful, isn't it? I thought we'd just share that. And obviously we're, we're getting close to January, so it will be time for Wassailing. I'm going to try and get to the Ket and Wassail again. Um, we did that last year. I made a video about it, I think. And yeah, it was really, really... It was really lovely actually. So if you can get to a sailing near you, I highly recommend it. They are held in the deepest, darkest part of the winter. So be prepared to wrap up warm. It was extremely cold when we went to one, but yeah. So time to do some cards. That's it for today so far. Let's pick out some cards for the week ahead. A little look at the energy, a little look at things that you may or may not be facing. love to hear about your Christmas plans. I'd love to hear about your solstice, what you got up to, whether you got up to greet the sun this morning. Um, maybe you celebrated a bit earlier in the week. Maybe you're going to celebrate next week. Remember, there are no real rights or wrongs. If you can't observe something at the exact moment, it doesn't matter. It's better to have the celebration than not have the celebration. Um, I'd love to hear whether you do anything for New Year. Uh, I'd also love to hear whether you've got any rituals surrounding this time of year, whether that be Yuletide, Winter Solstice, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. I'd love to know. Um, and maybe we'll talk about them next week. 
Okay, so I've drawn to pick three cards today and we have got death, we have got the six of cups and we have got the ten of cups. And this feels like a lovely end of calendar year message, doesn't it? With death card, the death of something, the death of the year. Now with the death card, there is usually some pain associated with this, but this is a natural death of something. This isn't like a shocking forced death. I mean, it could be a surprise, whatever this is, whatever's coming to an end, whether it be a situation or a relationship or a job or, you know, whatever the thing is, um, it might be a shock, but it's very, very different in energy to the absolute catastrophe of the Tower card. This is much more of a natural ending. It might be forced upon you, it might not. There will be some pain, but it's not like the Tower card. And it ultimately, it is for your highest good. It's so that room can be made for something better to come along, something that's better for you and your highest good. I always think of the phrase, out with the old, in with the new, with the death card, which is very, very topical for this time of year, isn't it? Um, and, and the message is, the way to handle this death is to look back, look back at the good things that it gave you, the benefits, the things that you achieved, the things that were good about this, whatever it is that's coming to an end or has ended, just to look at the things, the things that made you smile, the things that, you know, the gifts that you have taken from this, the things that really have brought your heart joy, you know, are taking a moment to smell the flowers and to just look at the good aspects of it and to reminisce a little bit. And then this card here again says that, you know, this death has to happen because it will bring happier and better things. So this card I call the happily ever after card. It's the happy family card. We have this lovely rainbow of cups here and we have children singing and dancing and the couple are happy. They've got their arms together. They're in a very balanced pose. And this means good times, good times are coming. So as a result of this ending, this, this end of an era of whatever it is, we have good times coming. So the way to deal with it is to just take the good from it, take what you can from it. Um, reflect on it, look back, and then move forwards, move forwards onto those happier times. So um, yeah, we've got Christmas coming up. I don't know if you celebrate that. If you do, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful time. Even if you don't really celebrate it, but you're gonna take this time to be with friends and family, then please enjoy. If you're on your own, please know that this whole community is here with you and are behind you. Maybe watch some of these videos in some of the time that you've got. I hope you get a break if you're working as well. And I'm just wishing you all the love and very good wishes for this festive season. I don't know if I'll be here on the 29th. I'm gonna to aim to be, my husband's gonna be working between Christmas and New Year's, so I'm gonna try and do a video. And if we do, we're gonna very much focus on sort of like end of year, end of calendar year things. I will try to, but it depends on how we go. Obviously it's a busy time for visitors and stuff like that. If not, I'll be back in January and I think we'll look at January as a fresh slate, a fresh start. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here this year and all of your support. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sending so much love and many blessings to you all. Okay, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.